Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackEnd, and this is a pooling demo. Uh, pooling is a very exciting feature in the 4.4 release. It's already available in TIP, so uh, you're welcome to start playing with it as soon as you see this video. And what it allows you to do is treat digital rebar as a bare metal cloud. So you go to the pooling API, you say, give me a machine or machines with certain criteria, and it provides you with machines out of the pool. Uh, you can create multiple resource pools, you can control how they flow, you can uh, consume them with APIs like Terraform um, or other uh, systems. It's very simple. All of the normal digital rebar workflows, controls, RBAC, uh, enterprise capabilities are, are baked into this system, so it's a first-class citizen of the product. And I'm going to tour you through it. We're going to start simple. We're going to add up some more operational controls. I'll show you our uh, prototype Terraform provider for this feature and then we'll go all the way through some hybrid cloud provisioning and building machines on demand based on this feature so it's a lot here we're gonna walk through it step by step so in this basic system I've already generated uh, 10 machines in this case they're not even machines they're just uh, rebar agents backed by containers perfect way to test this type of feature and we have a load generator workflow that does nothing but change the icon on the machine so I can watch uh, the systems as it goes and, and take actions that stretches things out a little bit because otherwise changing pools becomes just instantaneous and all I see is some icon change so I want to be able to show you what things look like a little better um, and play with it and this of course is just part of our development um, content pack and you can play with that along with things like always fail which we'll also use to demonstrate what happens when pool allocation doesn't work as expected and how you would respond to those things so in this case I have these 10 machines they're all in the default pool which is exactly where I would expect them to be I haven't created any other pools and if I want I can do something as simple as I go into the pools menu here and allocate or remove a machine so in this case it's now uh, flagged as in use or I can release it uh, and it is now not in use um, pretty straightforward uh, from that perspective uh, it's a little bit more exciting if I do it from our overview page and here I can say I have a default pool I could say I want three machines out of that pool and go and it pulls out those three machines and I'm now showing them in use. If I jump back over to machines, you'll see three machines out. They're just randomly assigned. I could go put them in or out if I want from here, but it's a little bit more interesting to do it from our API. So, or the CLI in this case. So I can say DRP CLI uh, pools manage. Uh, actually, first I can check to see what's active. And when I do that, I see that the default pool is active. There's only one pool at this point. We're going to create some more. And if I look for the status of the default pool, it'll show me all the machines that are in use, all the machines that are available, uh, so I can get a quick snapshot. If I actually want to manage that default pool, what I could do is I can say manage. I want to allocate uh, from the default pool. And that literally does the process of checking a machine out of the pool. I could then do a release uh, from the machines that I have checked out. Um, you'll notice it's not the same machine coming in and out. And if I want to control it, uh, we actually have a lot of different parameters here, and these are all also obviously exposed in the API and programmable um, to be able to do things like choose all the machines, pick, uh, I can apply filters uh, for our system. I can add profiles and things like that. I want to show you a couple of these options, but before I do, let's make it a little bit more exciting to watch machines get allocated or not. Uh, so in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to go into the pools section of the menu and I'm going to add a, the default pool. So by default, there is no default pool, but I, I have to define it in order to uh, do things like set workflows and profiles and things like that. So what I want to do is I want this load generator script to run when uh, I allocate and I also want it to run when I release. So we're going to say load generator. You can also do enter and exit actions. So uh, imagine that if you had a pool of machines and you wanted to uh, have, you had a, uh, a machine learning pool and a VDI pool and you want it to swing machines back and forth depending on load or time of day or just resource allocation availability. When you add a machine into that pool, 
Digital Rebar can add actions that prepare the machines for that pool. So they could reformat the drives or set up, change the drive partitions, um, remove drive partitions, reset the BIOS to remove hyperthreading or turn off hyperthreading. Um, so we've really thought through how all these bits and pieces fit together into an operational whole. It's not just um, you know allocate release, but there's operational subtlety in how we you have to think about that, and that includes being able to add profiles. So if I want, I can say, you know what, I'd really like you to add. Um, a profile in here. I had, I gonna have, I'd have to define one. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Uh, but if I wanted to add a parameter, I could be adding. Um, boy, we have so many choices in this case. Um, I could change the icons that are being used. To, actually, I can change the wait time that's ne that the system waits uh, during the. Um, allocation and release. So if I set this to uh, two seconds, it'll go slower. By default, it's one. This is a good actual. This is actually a great choice for this. So uh, when I release, I'm going to go ahead and remove that same parameter. So uh, wait time and releases will now go faster because I've added that parameter. I'm going to add here, and in this case, now you can see I have the default pool. This looks good over here. So I've got a couple of machines here. If I go into my command line, let me squinch it down so you can actually watch these things happen, and I say pools release all machines, I have to say default, of course, all machines. What's going to happen is you can see it now literally releasing all the machines that were in that pool, and because I stipulated the um, workflow, now I get a behavior from that release operation. Uh, so super exciting, I can now play with things coming in and out and actually see what's happening. Uh, so that's really cool. Let's add another pool in here. Default's great, but what I'd really like to do is uh, I'm gonna have a, a one called heart and I'm gonna do the same thing. I want um, this uh, load generator script in here, that's good, another one load generator. Just going to keep it very simple for the demo. And we're going to say heart outline. See if I can do that right. I did. I got a heart outline. So now I have machines, but there are no machines in that heart pool. So I could take a couple of machines here and I can switch them into that pool. So heart, we're going to move them into the pool. You actually can see the icon has changed. If I allocate them um, they're going to go through the generator and you'll see um, some different icons. And so we actually have, there's a state machine behind this. So in this case, the state machine is having the, uh, the, the machines are building over here in overview. Uh, you see that they're in transition and they've gone through the process. So that's excellent and nice solid color for those that are in that, that process. And I can go in and release them and they'll go back through the, the other side of it. That looks, that looks like it's doing exactly what I want to be able to do. So I've got two pools to play with. Um, I actually am going to tweak it a little bit because I want uh, these pools I have, um, I have plans for. So we're going to move them back. So this is, they're in the default pool, which is great. These ones are in the heart. And then if I want, I can go in, let's define yet another pool. That should be exciting. We'll call this one the star pool. And the star pool, what we'll do is we'll also pick load generator. And then for the release, we're gonna always fail. So always fail um, is a development workflow that always fails, not very uh, clever naming from that. Uh, and so for let's just put one machine in the star workflow here. Great. Oops. Let's see what's going on. Oh, let's see. No, I want to. I think I forgot to set the icon. That's exactly what happened. Oh, well, small things that I miss. Edit. Edit. And let's give it an icon that I like. Uh, 
Okay, so now I can clearly see it's in the star pool. If I went through, um, and it's not as much fun to allocate the specific machine this way, but it does let me illustrate uh, the important point of what's going to happen when um, these fail. Let's do it from the overview page to add a little bit more excitement. So you can see I've, I'm clearly seeing all of these components. I'm going to take my star machine. When I release here, I get a failure, which is exactly what you'd expect. The machine says it's holding. And in this case, I can see very clearly the pool is now in a failed state. I cannot stress enough um, that the importance of actually being able to say, I'm doing these release, the whole purpose of pooling is self-service and having external systems calling into digital rebar. As an operator, you don't know who's doing that, right? You don't know where it's coming from. I'm about to do a Terraform demo where if the Terraform allocation fails, you have to figure out what happened. And this behavior is exactly what you need to say, oh, this machine failed, right? The operate, the user's gonna find out and you're gonna be able to go and say, this machine failed, let me see what happened. You can come back in, you can go to the workflow. You can take your corrective action. And when that machine, I have to tell it to start. And when that machine completes that work, the state machine kicks in and says, oh, now I can finish this option and go. And so, this is the type of operational thinking that is essential to make uh, this, this type of feature work and be effective for operators. Because otherwise you're just throwing a whole bunch of machines at people and they're gonna slowly decay into a disheveled state. Digital Rebar includes the operational controls to make sure that you remain in control of your infrastructure and that your users have a great experience with the self-service interface. So let's uh, go ahead and take this back into the uh, default pool. That looks excellent. So now I have some machines to play with. All right, that's the basics. So I've shown you how we can allocate release, how the workflows work. Um, I haven't yet shown you um, how uh, the parameters are going to get assigned. So let me go ahead and do that also. So in here, when, when the machine's running, um, you remember I told you it's setting the dev wait time. That's excellent. Um, there is actually, uh, some of these machines have an inventory uh, value set. And I did that because I want to be able to show you what it looks like if I want to add in a filter. So in this case, the inventory value is inventory manufacturer, like that. So I can come over to this system and say pools manage, I want to allocate from default, that looks good. And I want to be able to say inventory manufacturer equals rack in. So this is going to act like a filter uh, you could do the same thing on anything you've defined a parameter for. So when I go here, it's taken that one one machine and it's identified only the machines I, I did the bottom five that have this value set. And so that allows me to literally ask for machines that meet certain criteria. So you could say I need this many disks, this much RAM, this team, this name, whatever you've set as a value for the machine, you can use as a filter in the APIs. Uh, and that's absolutely essential. Again, once you know, it's not just a pool of resources, you can stipulate how you want that done. And these just use built-in digital rebar filters. So greater than, less than, includes. Anything you can filter in the API, you can include in this uh, categorization filter. So very, very handy from that perspective. So that's really great because now we've shown you how to use the UX and the CLI, but the purpose of pooling is really to make downstream consumption easier. It's about enabling digital rebar APIs to be consumed by other things like Terraform, uh, a one day uh, cluster uh, API for Kubernetes, things like that, for your own um, allocate, deallocate, uh, provision workflows, right? That's, that's the goal here. And so let me show you what it looks like to use this with Terraform. Uh, and so it, it's pretty straightforward from that perspective. I'm going to do a Terraform init. Um, I've already defined uh, my variables. So I've got my endpoint, my, my key set. And so if I edit the Terraform, so what I have here is the Terraform provider. Uh, it's going to pull in my resource variables, but I could define the endpoints or keys or tokens if I had it. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to pull from the default pool. Uh, I'm going to add a profile called not TF, but Terraform. I can VI correctly. 
you have to predefine the preferred files for them to be added. I'm going to add some parameters, foo and bar, uh, in that allocation. You can see it in the background. I haven't uh, allocated anything yet. And then I'm going to uh, create a, pull a second machine out where I've got filters. So I'm going to take advantage of the same filter I showed you in the CLI, but I'm going to do it through Terraform this time. So in that case, uh, and if I wanted, I could specify SSH keys, just SSH keys and pairs. Uh, that is allowable in this prototype driver. And if I Terraform apply, it's going to go through. It will ask me traditionally, yes, it's showing me that it's connecting and going to give you some ideas. And you can see that it has gone through and pulled the machines out based on those components. Uh, for the first one, it's added this Terraform plan. If I click in over here, you'll see it's also added foo and bar as parameters. Uh, in this case, it happened to also pick up an inventory manufacturer machine. And then our second machine over here um, is the one it picked up from that. After a little bit of time, it completed. And if I say Terraform def Destroy, it will uh, release those machines just like you would expect. The, th the thing that's really important to understand here is this is a self-service API. So I can watch the operations going on in the background as from the operator console in the UX. Same thing would be true if I come over to the overview page. I can actually watch operations as users are requesting machines or and re uh, removing them. Uh, so let's be a little bit more creative here. We're going to go in um, and we're going to add account. Looks good. And we're going to apply here and get more machines out. Yes. And as an operator, I'm going to be able to watch exactly what's going on in the background. This looks great. Everything is moving along pretty darn well. Uh, so I can see that there are machines in transition. If there were errors, I would see it here. Once the transition completes, they'll be in use. And I can see what my pool resource allocation is. I can actually see the state of different machines in, uh, as they go through that process. See exactly what's happening across my, my fleet of, of resources. Uh, it just finished up. Again, I'm getting live updates here. That looks good. Uh, so that's, you know, exactly like you would expect. And it's not supposed to be complex. It's just Terraform uh, treating digital rebar like a cloud, getting machines and um, provisioning and, and doing those operations. I do want to go in and make this a little bit more fun. Um, I don't have physical machines to allocate and, and deallocate. Um, which is what you would expect to do. Give me a machine, put an operating system on it, that bare metal cloud functionality. But if you've seen our hybrid cloud demo, I do have the ability to take machines and provision them in other clouds uh, by running a cloud provision workflow. And so what I want to do is I'm going to take our star workflow over here, the one I've played with a little bit. And instead of moving load generator, I'm going to do a cloud provision operation over here and a cloud decommission operation. So this will, uh, when this workflow runs, it will provision machines in the cloud. And when this runs, it'll decommission machines in the clouds. And so I'm going to take these three machines that I've got running over here. This looks great. And I am going to put them into the star pool so I can play. Excellent. And then I've already put uh, these into cloud provisioning pools um, based on different cloud infrastructure I have. So I have a Linode one, I have one for Google and one for Amazon. And what I should be able to see is uh, different uh, pools come up and, and show me actually different infrastructures when I, when I go do that. So to make that change, I'm going to go back to my test infrastructure over here. I'm going to tell it that I want to use the pool of star instead of default star. And here, uh, that should be all I need to do. So if I hit apply here, say yes, we're going to go through the same operations. At this time, instead of running my load generator, I'm actually running a provisioning workflow in the back end um, where it's going to go through and, and take actions to bring machines up in those other infrastructure. Uh, fun thing here is it's actually using Terraform uh, run by Digital Rebar in a container on the endpoint to do those actions against those three different clouds. Uh, and so I can actually see the Terraform plan being run um, and creating the machines in, in those clouds uh, for that operation. So super, super cool from this perspective. It looks like uh, this machine is my Google machine. 
And so Google over here is showing pool two being created. That looks great. Uh, Amazon over here is probably already coming up. Let's see. You can see I've run a couple of rehearsals. Here is my pool three coming up and my Linode machine over here. Here's pool one doing its thing to get provisions. So, wow. I've been able to use Terraform in this case to run against uh, sort of static reserved resources. They're not using any resources, they're just uh, objects in the system. And then when Terraform requests them, I am dynamically creating backing instances for them um, and then retrieving them for Terraform and as soon as that provisioning done, handing them over to Terraform. So truly, um, you know, a Terraform plan against digital rebar that then spins out and provisions resources uh, globally in this case. Um, so a lot of fun uh, being able to actually put this pooling operation into a much broader context of how you would be able to um, make this infrastructure go. Um, we're starting to see that whole, uh, all those pieces came, came about and the provisioning is completed. Actually, it's always interesting to see which clouds uh, finish these provisioning operations first. They're all pretty close and so there's not a lot of material difference in how fast you can get a machine or an instance off, off uh, a cloud provider here. But looking pretty good, just waiting for the last uh, pieces to come up before I just go ahead and destroy those instances and, and make everything go away. Uh, one thing to note in this case is sort of fun is that the, inst the credentials that I needed to start this, the digital rebar credentials, were the only credentials I needed. Um, as an operator, I was actually able to hold the credentials for the cloud um, and you know control them. So I knew where things were going, how they were going, who did it. Um, I got actually a lot of data and controls in front of uh, the system. Plus, and this is absolutely essential, I, I wasn't limited to Terraform not being able to SSH post provision, complete any processes and workflows. All that stuff was baked into this um, and I got complete control end to end in the process. So let me go in and do my cleanup so I don't leave any resources hanging around. And you'll get to watch um, cloud decommission process going in the background as I'm actually deleting the machines out of those different cloud instances. So over here, goodbye VMs, same with over here. Uh, and we will get to watch that decommission process uh, clean up all of the hanging chads. Hope this was helpful. Um, I know it, you probably didn't expect to see a hybrid cloud demo buried inside of a pooling demo. Uh, it's a nice add to sort of understand just how big a feature pooling is because it really does hook into the core provisioning workflow infrastructures automation chaining concept that we've really been uh, bringing to market. Uh, and hopefully helped you connect some dots on seeing how all of these pieces worked. Please, please come in uh, racken.com, join our Slack community, download and try this stuff. This, this is something for you to try and explore and play with. It's, it's really actually very easy to get running and set up. And we love to talk to you about it. If you have interesting ideas on how to apply this technology in your infrastructure, we wanna hear about it. Uh, Digital Rebar is self-managed infrastructure. It's not a SaaS. We're not running it for you. We're not a cloud provider. This is you running your infrastructure, maintaining control the whole time. Thank you.